Today you will learn how to define the basic setup, SolidWorks CAM or in CAMWorks. I'll cover how to define the machine setup, how to define the coordinate system and how to define the stock. As final step I will create the mill part setup or the machining direction. Hi this is Tim from CatWorks DK. If you are looking for videos about CAMWorks, SolidWorks CAM or SolidWorks in general, then you have come to the right channel. I will make guides and tips and tricks and demo videos and just basic content that might inspire or educate you. If this is your first time watching, be sure to subscribe to the channel and never miss out on a video. I would also recommend reading the description as there might be some useful information there as well. In case you have any ideas for content in upcoming videos, please share a comment in the comments section. Enough with the intro. Let's get started. With integrated CAM you can program parts more efficient. SolidWorks CAM powered by CAMWorks and of course the more advanced CAMWorks bundles will give you more power at your fingertips. Programming and especially reprogramming is going to be much more easy than you have been used to uh, based on the integrated CAM and the technology database that is included with SolidWorks CAM and CAMWorks. This could also mean that parts you program in the future will become more and more complex because you are growing more confident in the software. Every part programming starts with the basic setup and this is exactly what we are going to cover in the following video. Unless you use templates, but let's keep that for another topic. If you hang around to the end, I will show a program pocket just as a sneak peek for the next video. In this first video, I'm going to talk about SolidWorks CAM. And on the next videos, I'm going to use CAMWorks because essentially those two products are the same. Um, you just get a bit more functionality when you're using CAMWorks over SolidWorks CAM. But for the concepts of how to set up everything and how to use the software, SolidWorks CAM is a very good starting point because everyone has that today. So, in the feature manager, you now have three additional tabs. That is SolidWorks CAM feature tree, it is SolidWorks CAM operation tree, and it's the SolidWorks CAM tools tree. Apart from that, you also have some new tabs available to you in the toolbar, in the ribbon bar. So you have SolidWorks CAM and you have SolidWorks CAM tolerance based machining. And you can obviously highlight and turn off and on these tabs as, as you require. And you can use the tools where you also have some options for, for using the same functionality. So basically what I tend to do is I always go into the SolidWorks CAM feature tree or the CAMWorks feature tree. And this is where I start my programming. The very first thing that you might notice is that in SolidWorks CAM, we are missing a, a node called configuration. And basically, if you want to program on different configurations of your parts, then you need to have SolidWorks CAM Professional or CAMWorks. So skipping that one, obviously, I'm going to talk about the machine setup first off. So I tend to double click on a, a node. You can double click or you can right click, or I can use the SolidWorks CAM toolbar. That is definitely entirely a person to person based experience what you want to do and feel most comfortable in doing. But for simplicity, I'm just going to double click on the machine. When the machine node is opened, we have the window where we can select the different machines that are available to us. In SolidWorks CAM, currently I only have mill metric, and the reason it is metric is because we are working in MMGS. So CAM is picking up the unit of measure set on the part file or the document template. So I cannot select anything other than this one. If I had different machines, I could add those to this list and I will show how that is done a bit later. When selecting the mill metric, you can optionally set that it's 
going to pre-select the correct tooltip for that machine. You have some options to drive how tools are added to your program. We have tooltip priority. I definitely recommend using that one. Uh, use tooltips tools only. I probably do not recommend because if you have an M6 thread and you do not have an M6 thread on your tooltip, then you're not going to get that thread defined. So you have to manually create that. But this is a, a very good starting point. You can add tools, you can edit tools, remove tools, update tools, and you can even save the tool grip. So if you're going to create new tools to this tool grip, you can save that as your default. From the post processor tab, you can select the active post processor. There are a bunch of predefined posts available when you are installing SolidWorks Cam or CamWorks, but we can obviously help in creating a more customized post processor for you. If you are very good or comfortable in working on your own, you can actually do your own post processors. There are videos on YouTube uh, in how you can create and edit uh, a post processor using UPG or Universal Post Generator. I will not cover that during the next videos at least. Apart from that, you also have the option to select some settings for how coolant and length and diameter offsets are defined. Those can come from either tool or from post processor. And we can even add some different parameters, some values that we are going to write manually into the program. The following three tabs are more related to four axis and five axis machining, where we need to tell the rotary axis and the tilt axis, and then later on the angular pairs needed for the machine. But that is completely irrelevant at this point. So machine, select that one, double click or select, tool grip, select, select, or double click, post processor, select, select, or double click. You can also browse for your post processor and it can be located anywhere on your network. When everything is set, you click OK. The next in the list, in my opinion, is to define the coordinate system. I prefer defining the coordinate system before I go to the stock manager, but you will see why in a second. So I will double click on this node. I could also right click and edit definition, but double click works fine. For the method of defining a coordinate system, we have two options, user defined or a SOLIDWORKS coordinate system. I'm going to go for the user defined at this point. We can select entity, so I can pick a circle and that will place inside the center of the circle or I could pick a corner. I can also select the part bounding box vertex, so that will create a tight fit box around the part that I'm programming. When I select that option, I get these dots where I can select on whatever dot I need. And if I rotate the part, you can see that we have one on the top surface, on the middle and the bottom surface. We also have on each side surface, as well as on all four corners of each face. The same is true if I select the stock bounding vertex. In that case, it's going to jump to the stock that I've defined. We can set it at either part or stock. And hit OK. Then I want to go into my stock manager, double click on that one. And here I can select the material used on this part. This is relevant only if you are using speed and feet calculation from, uh, from the feet and speed database. 
because that would then define the correct feeds and speeds for your tools. You can also select the stock type, bounding box. You can select the sketch type, which is extrude sketch. You can select the STL file, which is an import or a scan. Or you can select an existing or current part file. For the part file option, we can use selected part and browse to a standard stock. If you are working with default stock sizes, then you can use this one, or you can use the current part and select a configuration. For most part, I use the bounding box option. So where are we going to calculate the origin of this bounding box from? Now I have origin and fixture coordinate system. So I'm going to go for the FCS. Using the FCS is going to use the point that I picked for my coordinate system. If I use the origin, then it's an arbitrary point, in this case on the bottom, so that is our default origin of SolidWorks. And this is why I prefer defining the coordinate system beforehand. Now I can add material to X direction, both positive and negative. So for instance, adding five millimeters is going to add five millimeters to this side. If I want to add material to the other side, the X minus, I can do so by typing in a value. If I want to run uniform values, I can click on the button for the X and that is going to set five millimeters on both sides. And that is true also for the Y, for the Z, and I can set that as, as a default condition for my bounding box offsets. The stock size is evaluated and I can see clearly the size of my stock. When I'm satisfied, I can hit OK. The next we are going to do is actually begin programming. And there are a few ways of programming a part inside SolidWorks Cam and CamWorks. The one mostly notable is extract machinable features, which is going to be analyzing your model for these types of features and basically automatically program the part file. For, for these next presentations, uh, I'm going to run very much manual programming so you can see how we are programming and in that way better understand how SolidWorks Cam and CamWorks is actually working. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new mill part set up. I can do that by right-clicking on the stock manager or on the coordinate system. Right-click and select mill part setup. In this case, I already had front plane pre-selected and I basically don't want to have anything. So I'm just going to delete that to make it more simple. I can then select a surface and it doesn't have to be the topmost surface. It just needs to be a surface perpendicular to the tool orientation. So where does the tool come from? It comes from the top. So I can select this surface and that is going to be perpendicular to the tool. There is a small indicator that sometimes can be very hard to discover, but you see the arrow pointing downwards and that is exactly what I want. So now that is my target surface. If I flip this, it goes to the bottom of the part. There are some additional settings available inside the mill part setup. For instance, I can add a face feature. I can add a perimeter, a multi-surface feature or a curve feature for chamfering. I am not going to use any of these at this point. 
hit OK, and now I'm ready to start programming. I'm actually not going to program anything in this video, uh, that will be for the next one, but I can show you that if I right click on the middle part setup and I go to two and a half axis feature, these are the types that I can define. So I can define pocket, slot, corner slot, bus, hole, open pocket, face feature, open profile, engrave feature, and curve feature. Most of these I have highlighted on this part file. So we have a rectangular pocket, irregular slot coming in here, a rectangular bus, which is these sides. We have a multi-stepped hole. We have a rectangular corner slot, a circular bus, an up-round pocket, an irregular pocket, an irregular slot, like this one, a hole, a countersink hole, a counterbar hole, and what we call a two and a half axis pocket because it has some fillets and maybe it has chamfers as well on the side. So we can pick up on those features as well. Then we have up round, boss, and rectangular slot. I will cover all of these in greater detail very shortly, but let's just program this pocket and I can show you how it looks. So I'm going to select the bottom of my pocket. I'm going to select the top of my pocket. Define that I want to rough and finish and hit OK. Generate operation plan, generate tool path, and we can see that we programmed this pocket. Now, the steps of doing this is going to be covered in the next video. That is all I had planned for this video. Now, I hope that you are going to subscribe and never miss out any other upcoming videos where we are going to go more deeply into how to program parts more advanced. At the end of all of these videos, you will be confident in programming with SolidWorks CAM and CAMWorks in 2.5 axis machining. Thank you for watching.